Yes, Dr. Olson, let me turn to you because we've just learned, actually, as we've been on the air here, I want to say, I think as, as Peter was talking or just before, that we now have a COVID uh, Omicron variant case in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, right? So this now expands the number of states that have this variant. And I have to be really clear here, that is not unexpected, right? Like that is not necessarily surprising information. This is something that it, it seems from talking with public health experts, we knew was sort of inevitable at this point. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, that's a very fair assessment. In fact, last weekend, I predicted that by the end of this week, mm. we'd probably see it in at least 50 or more countries in most of the states. So this virus is here. It's moving uh, through our communities, and we will document that over the days ahead. So this is not a surprise. One of the things that I wanted to ask you about, you know, you heard Peter, uh, our White House correspondent, chief White House correspondent there, talk about how the president, uh, top health officials in the administration are saying, hey, get boosted. But then you have something else interesting, which is some experts, um, including some that are writing in a Washington Post op-ed now, saying that the push for boosters for everybody could actually prolong the pandemic. I want to pull it up here. They say the campaign includes exaggerated accounts of the waning efficacy of the vaccines, giving the public, including the vaccine hesitant, reason to think that the shots are less effective than originally advertised. I got to tell you, Dr. Olsterholm, as somebody who just got boosted, there are some questions, I have some question marks about this. The messaging is get boosted, that's good, but then you're hearing that might actually prolong this pandemic. How do we cut through that? Well, first of all, I categorically disagree with that op-ed piece. I actually had an op-ed piece along with Dr. Eric Topol in The Washington Post just several days before that, taking the other point of view. Uh, you know, all along, when we put these vaccine programs together, it was based on information where we did studies looking for how could we get these vaccines out quickly in the pandemic, both in terms of making sure they were safe, but also that they provided some protection. Many of us said all along this was probably going to be a three-dose mRNA vaccine uh, prime as well as a two-dose J&J. &J. And so we were not surprised by the fact that we just needed that third dose all along. And, you know, we are not trying to tell the public the vaccines aren't working. There are many other vaccines that have that same kind of a schedule. And so what we can show is, is that if you get your first dose of an mRNA vaccine, like Moderna or, or Pfizer, you get a boost. You get your second dose, you get a much better boost. You get your th third dose, you get an incredible boost. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what Dr. Fauci was talking about today, why that's important, because that can actually uh, uh, offset the immune evasion we see with the, this particular variant. A spokesperson for the WHO today said that they're seeing that previous natural infection and natural immunity isn't protecting people necessarily against being, being reinfected by Omicron. Understanding that there's not a ton of data out here yet, I know that there is still you know, more time needed to assess this, but I wonder what, if any, preliminary conclusions you can draw from that. Well, let me just say that at this point, as somebody who's been in the trenches for 46 years working yeah. on emerging infectious diseases, I've been very impressed with how fast this virus is being transmitted. I think it will soon overrun Delta. What the you th let me just stop you there. You think it'll be the primary variant in this country, Omicron, rather than Delta? No, I think for the whole world, not just this country. And it will happen relatively quickly. Uh, so just mark my word, a month to six weeks from now, I think that Omicron will be the new Delta. But I think the big question is, even though we know it's more transmissible, what does it do in terms of serious illness? Does it cause more serious illness or not? Uh, if you are previously vaccinated or partially vaccinated, what happens? We already know, as you just pointed out, Hallie, that in fact, in South Africa, we're seeing many new cases in people who have previously been infected and as they're having breakthroughs. The question I have is what happens to them? Do they have mild illness? Do they have moderate illness, severe illness? And that's only gonna come with time. This, you know, hospitalization and deaths are unfortunately right. we call lagging indicators. They're often two to three or four weeks after the cases occur. That's going to be, to me, the huge question that sits upon this whole Omicron uh, situation. So then how just quickly here, how much longer do you think it will be? Two to three to four weeks then until we know more about Omicron or maybe do you look I at a shorter time frame? Well, I think we could learn more in a shorter time frame. Unfortunately, yeah. it means we're going to have that much more transmission. It'll become apparent. Uh, you know, if we have thousands and thousands of people who show up as cases with mild illness, that's going to be great news. Uh, if we have cases that are mild among those who are younger, previously vaccinated, but we see the same kind of uh, very serious illness picture that we see with many people who have underlying risk factors for severe disease, then we got ourselves a real problem. 
And uh, I think at this point, we have to count on the fact that Omicron is going to take over. It has tremendous implications. And everything that you heard earlier today at the White House briefing about please get vaccinated, get mm. your boosters, mm. uh, is exactly what we need to keep doing.